Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Grassy Tracer. Don't forget, if you like the show, keep liking, sharing, and even subscribing to Flip- Flippin' Mad Motorsport uh, on the YouTube channel and Facebook. Uh, where you can catch up on any old episodes or shows, you can now also jump on Spotify, listen to past interviews, as well as the ones that we're going to keep on posting. Now it's on to this week's guest who has worked his ways through various motorsport categories and has done driver training and even raced overseas. To find out more about his motorsport journey, I welcome Lachlan Ward to the show. How are you tonight, Lachlan? Good, mate. Good, mate. How are you? Good yourself? Yeah, keeping busy, keeping busy, you know, how it is in motorsport. Do you prefer Lockie or Lachlan? Oh, you know, I prefer, I think I prefer Lockie. Um, yeah. I don't know. All my mates call me Lockie and everyone else in motorsport calls me Lachlan and Lockie. So either or. Yeah. Well, firstly, uh, where did you start your passion for motorsport and where did it all begin? I guess that's a bit of a different story, Mara. So most, most of the time people who are in motorsport, they're, you know, they're, they're, their dads are in it, their uncles in it or something like that. Um, I actually started when I was like 13, 14. Um, I really wanted, you know, the electric cars that kids drive around the street on just like little they're based off Jeeps or whatever, things yeah. like that. Um, my local Toys R Us had a, a Mario Kart version and I really wanted it so bad. Um, and then my dad said to me, let's just get a, get a real go-kart. So we ended up getting a real kart. And I just used to go to Wollongong and just cut laps. So sort of every Thursday dad would pick me up from school and would go down and just do laps into the night. And it was, um, it was good fun and yeah, sort of a spark from there. We got into racing and then moved up into cars. So, yeah. And when you got involved in karting and you started doing laps, how quickly did you get to a competitive level and where where did you start winning races? Yeah, so when I first started, obviously it was just having fun practicing and my dad would come out with me and we'd just, we'd just cut laps and, um, you know, just have fun and, I think it was 2016 was my first race. Um, and we did my first race in a J against all the K 100s, my first five races or four races till we got off my P's. Um, and then we bought a deadly cart when they were called deadly. Now they're called Sarah. Yeah. Um, but we bought the deadly cart and actually my first, like my first race in the deadly was at Picton. Um, but my proper first race was in Melbourne at the junior top guns. Um, and we were in the P plate class or what is it? It's D or C class. Um, and we actually won, won that. So my first race was not far off, off my P's, which was pretty cool. Um, and yeah, we met a lot of cool people. We ran with like stable karting. We ran with Shane Piper. Um, we ran with New South Wales kart team. Um, and just, just got it, got our head into a diff, lots, of, lots of different, got lots of different advice, sorry, and lots of different perspectives on things. And then sort of did our own thing towards the end. And we, you know, we, we won a lot of races at Lithgow and all the Southern star series in New South Wales. We won a lot. Um, and yeah, just just quickly progress, progressed into cars because we didn't find a reason to stay in carts if we were winning. Um, we're over out. My dad's very much if you're doing well at something, might as well just move on so then you can be challenged. Because if you're not being challenged, you're not learning anything. Mm. So yeah, we we moved on to to cars in 2018. Actually, we started the transition into cars mm. um, while still doing a bit of karting. Yeah, that's really cool. I remember my dad had the same mentality. Um, yeah. I only did two years in Cadet 9 before he moved me up to, um, what's it called, to Cadet 12. At, at nine years old, I was still nine at the time. Then I did Cadet 12 for like three years, I think, the proper amount of time. Then I went yeah. to um, then I went to juniors at only 11 when most kids go at 13. Yeah. So yeah. I only did one year juniors and then I left karting. Um, yeah. Obviously, yeah, I that's right. thought that was the best way to do it. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And if you if you don't like if you if you're not like getting beaten or not chasing someone, there's no point really to stay there. So you did the right thing is to keep going. What do you think karting taught you that's helped you progress into cars? Well, so the, so the biggest thing I think is just uh, like setup wise, um, the front end on a on a car is very similar to what you do in a car. Like setup wise, if you wanted more steer or less steer or things like that. And the same with the rear in, in relation to softening and stiffening things. Um, I think that's the biggest thing I took from carts. And then obviously the, the absolute top thing from karting is racecraft. Um without carts, you'd go into cars and spend that two years in go-karting that you did. You'd spend that two years in cars trying to learn how to race and you know the classic under and over or like late breaking, just things like that, I think was the biggest from Cardi, um, for sure. Yeah, 100%. I, yeah. I can agree with you there. And how did you transition into cars 
And what was your first race car? Okay, so we, as as a family, we didn't have a lot of money. Um, so our biggest thing was like you, we can't go pay a big team straight up just to be able to go to race a car. Um, so my first car was an old, it was like a 1993 Daihatsu Charade um, and we did hill climbs. So I started doing hill climbs. Um, I used to go to a local kart track and just learn how to change gears. Um, so they were okay with me going on with the car and I used to just go up the third, up to fourth, back down to first, up to third, fourth, just keep, just keep going up and down the gears. Um, and then, yeah, we started doing hill climbs and just track days to learn. Um, and my first proper race ooh, would it have been, I think it would have been an XL race. Maybe it would have been an XL race. It would have been my first actual race or an XL or a former Ford race. I can't remember, but yeah, I think the best way to do it is learn first, then start racing. So yeah. like in go-karts, you, you don't just go buy a go-kart and start racing. You always do test days. You, you might get coaching. You know, there's all those things you do before. Mm-hmm. So, I think that's, so that's the way we run around it. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, on my behalf, uh, we <laughs> we entered very late. Like we didn't have our car ready for the start of this year. So we had to lease yeah. for the first round. But you did do Formula Ford. So is yeah. there a preference between driving Formula Ford or like something like a Hyundai XL, like what's in, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. What do, you, so what do you sort of prefer in a way? Yeah. So I've done Formula Ford. Um, I've done a lot of legend cars. Um, mm-hmm. I've done XLs. I'm in Aussie race cars at the moment. Um, and they're all like, for, depending what you want is what I'd pick. So like, if you want a car that's genuinely like just genuinely fun to drive, sorry, I'd go a legend car. Like, they just got so much, they got so much torque and power for how light they are and how like the tire works. You know, you can drift them easy. You can, it's like, it's just a fun car and everyone's awesome in legend cars. Everyone's friends. Um, Formula Ford is, it's a race car. It's a pro- proper built race car. So if you want to go fast, if you want to set fast times and work on your driver ability, um, you know, you, you'd work, you go to Formula Ford. Um, XLs again, it's that kind of mateship, but XLs has become expensive um, to be out the front. Um, so don't people expect going into XLs for it to be cheap. It's actually not now. It's a mm. bit more expensive. Um, but yeah, I think definitely I'd go legend cars. Um, then the Aussie race car, Formula Ford are about the same. Um, and then, yeah, I'd put XLs, even though they're still fun and awesome. And I love everyone in XLs and I love racing with everyone. Um, if I got to pick, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pick XLs first. Yeah. And did you build your Formula Ford or did you um, race for a team? Yeah, so we raced with Anglo Motorsport. Um, so Anglo Motorsport, one of the biggest, they are the biggest team in New South Wales when it comes to Formula Ford. Um, they've won so many state championships um, in Kent. And I was their first Duratec driver. So I was sort of a, a, a data driver to you know, set, set, up, set up the car, get data um, for the year. And we ended up winning the championship, which was awesome for the team. And, you know, this car had never raced. It was probably the oldest car in the field. Um, and I was versing... The two of the boys that I was closest with, they actually had Tom Randall's old Formula Fords. So they were oh, wow, $70,000 yeah. Formula Fords, yeah. Um, and we were against them and it, it, it was, wasn't easy, but we got the job done. Um, and yeah, I, can't, I still, still can't thank Anglo Motorsport enough for that year. Um, like without them, I definitely wouldn't have raced Formula Ford ever. So it was awesome. Yeah. Oh, I can imagine it would have been pretty awesome winning, yeah. um, you know, against, <laughs> against those sort of cars like Tom yeah. Randall. He's a pretty amazing driver, but I'm sure he would he have had a great car. Yeah, he did. And those cars, like even just simple things, like the way they came off the corner was just a completely different ball game because they had all that set up data from Tom and who, whatever team he ran with, it was, yeah, they, they, those cars were quick. Yeah. And yet yeah, you mentioned that you won the championship in your rookie year, but you were only 16 at the time. So that's yeah. such an amazing achievement. What, yeah. like when you won the championship, how did it make you feel like, you know, considering you're a rookie, you were in a car that wasn't the newest. What was it yeah. like for you? Uh, so we went like into the year, just being our, our, the way sort of my dad is and how we are, like we wanted to win, obviously everyone wants to win, but the way we had like with our money and all that, we really, really had, it was sort of a had to win, not wanted to win. Um, and we actually came into the last round and we were, we were down on points because of a DNF in the round before I, um, what happened? The, the tail shaft just pulled it. The bolts were loose and snapped and they pulled itself out. So we DNF'd yeah. on the races, which really dropped me back. Um, so we came into that last round where I'd calculated like every way. So whatever, whoever finished where, whatever happened, I knew where I had to finish and all that to win. Um, 
and we were lucky enough. So we got, we qualified third, um, which I, I, that changed my calculation because you got a, you get a point for pole. Oh, so yeah. if I got a pole, it made it easier, but it didn't. Um, so I had to win race one and two. Um, so I went out in race one, we won race one. Um, and then when I won race two, all I had to do was finish race three. So I won race two. And I think that was a bigger celebration than winning race three. Mm. Um, cause when I won race two, I just knew all I had to do that next race was just finish. It doesn't matter where just had to finish. And we, I just sat in third, watched the leaders battle and just let them do their thing and just followed them to the checkered flag. And, um, it was pretty cool. I had my mom there and she was, she was excited. I had Jade, no Jada. He was my driver coach. Oh, yeah. Um, he was pretty stoked and, you know, the, the team, Tim from the team and Dan Beal and my mechanic for the year, you know, uh, we were, everyone was pretty stoked. It was a pretty cool feeling. And like, it still, still sticks with me to this day. Like I got the video of when everyone, we, we, like, we were all, all they, everyone came over and was congratulating me. It's just pretty cool. Pretty cool thing. Hmm. Yeah. Now we have talked about, um, and you've talked about your legend car uh, racing yep. yeah, in Australia. And, you know, the Australian Championship and the New South Wales yep. Championship. Yep. How long did you race them for and who did you race for? So I raced Legend Cars from 2019. I still race them today. Um, oh, yeah? And that's, that's just with myself. So me and my main mechanic, Morgan Motorsport. So I do everything with him, basically. Um, we've been running Legend Cars for three years. Um, and it's, Legend Cars are, are still they're an awesome category, like, what I've learned from legend cars, I, I translate into a lot of stuff, just the way you have to drive them. They're really good uh, cars to learn, uh, but mainly throttle technique. They're very good at learning throttle technique. Um, but yeah, we run, we won the national championship, Australian championship and state championship in um, legend cars. Um, and we just raced at Winton two weekends ago or last weekend. Oh, yeah. um, and I clean swept that round as well. So they're, um, they're, they're fun. They're a fun class. And I was, you know, I definitely stand by legend cars um, as, and as well, like the prizes you give, like I've raced overseas with legend cars um, with Malaysia. That was one of the prizes they gave the top five national boys who won, or who were top five in the championship. They sent, we, they sent us over to Malaysia. Um, and I don't think you could even name a category that does that these days, like fully paid for sends you over to race in Malaysia. Like that's pretty awesome. Um, so yeah, I love legend cars. Yeah, I was just about to mention that. Um, could you yeah. elaborate a bit about that? Yeah, yeah. So they had a – it was a Malaysia versus Australia type event. Um, so we had six – six. it was five tar, the top five in the National Tar Championship, and then one random pick dirt driver. Um, they went against – so we raced against each other, each other. We had three heats in a final. Um, so in every heat, it was three Australian drivers, three Malaysian drivers. Um yeah, we won, we won, we came second in two heats and won one of the heats. Um, so we started second in the final. Um, but we unfor- I unfortunately got tangled up with another Aussie boy on the third lap or something. We got our bumpers interlocked. Uh, it was just because it was a, how tight the track was. It wasn't yeah. anyone's fault. It just happened. Um, but still an awesome experience, especially like because they've got so many people over there. It was, a, it was a big race and the amount of people that came is like equivalent to like the – like a supercar event for us. And it was just one of their normal sort of, for them, it was their normal weekend race, you know, yeah. which was pretty cool. So you wouldn't have raced on Sepang because your gear ratios wouldn't have been long enough. Yeah. 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 The, the poor little legend car would have been rev limiter halfway down the straight. <laughs> yeah. So where was the truck? It was in uh, Ippo, which is the other main city in Malaysia. Um, and it's called Gopeng Motor Speedway. So it was actually an oval, a tar oval. Oh yeah, um, which that was something I'd never done before, which was really cool. Like I was, I was in a way I was like, "Oh, how am I going to go?" But it was actually really fun, and I enjoyed it. Um, and then there, so I've done. We did that, and then also I've raced on dirt in legend cars. I've done a round in dirt, uh, which was awesome fun again. Like I, I was lucky enough to race at Parramatta before it closed. Um, so Parramatta Speedway is in Sydney. And it was a, yeah one of the biggest dirt venues ever, and yeah, unfortunately it's closed now. But I was yeah I was fortunate enough to race there, which was cool. Yeah, I'm sure it would have been awesome to race in Malaysia. Like, what an experience that would have been. What were the conditions yeah. like over there? And, like, how <laughs> different was the racing? Oh, man, very hot. Very, very hot. So, like, our qualifying kicked off at 8.30 p.m. their time. Yes. It was, I think it was 38 degrees and, like, 90% humidity. Like, hot, really hot. So. Yeah. I'm sitting in the car 15 minutes before the race. Like mum had a fan on me and was spraying water on my face. Like 
it was so hot. Um, yeah, compared to here, you know, we get a hot day, but like the humidity was the biggest killer. Yeah. It was just thick, thick air, you know? Um, so yeah, it was good. Well, let's move to a different subject. Um, so you also do some dr- driver training for yourself and other teams. What yep. do you enjoy most about helping other drivers improve? Yeah, so I started coaching, I think, well, it would have been 2018, just just sort of casually, um, just with like for someone to buy my card or whatever, buy my card, sort of coach and help them for a bit. Um, and the last, last two years, it's I've really put a lot of effort into it. Um, so I work with New South Wales kart team in Sydney. So I work with a lot of their drivers. Um, I've got a lot of my own drivers, sort of freelance stuff. Um, I've worked with, so I do all Anglo Motorsports. I do a lot of their coaching oh, now yeah. with the former Fords. Um, I do a lot of, uh, I work with track school where they're a big, mm. uh, I don't know if you know track school, but John yeah. Boston. So they run out of Wakefield and Wodonga normally. Um, so I do, I do lots of days with John Boston as well. Um, and it's good. Like, I think the best thing about coaching is just like being able to pass my knowledge on, but like actually helping people improve. So mm. you know, they are, I, always at the start of that, I'll be asked, what's your best time? And they'll tell me, and I'll be like, all right, we're going to improve that by a second or we're going to improve that by a second and a half. And actually doing that and seeing the smile at the end of the day, and like just the messages after the day saying, oh, thanks so much. Like he's very happy. Like things like that is so rewarding. And I think that's, that's the best thing about it for sure. Definitely. I, I can see how that would make you smile, you know, going out there, yeah. helping people improve and teaching them your knowledge. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's probably a great feeling. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is for but sure. What do you believe is the best piece of advice you could give to drivers who are looking to improve on their driver skills? Yeah, yeah. So definitely like one is is patience. Um, people, I see a lot of people that just got into the sport and I coach a lot of people like this and they've, they've just got in. It's like their second race and they, they, they say, why am I not up the front? Um, and I sort of got to say to them, like, see the kid that's winning, you know, he's been racing since you were seven. You're, you're 13 and you just started. You know, he's got, he's got six years on you. Um, so I think patience. And then don't be afraid, like, do they do get coaching so a lot of people are scared to go up to like uh like the big teams or, or things like that like don't even there's a lot of there's a lot of privateer coaches like myself um but don't be afraid to go up to a team and say hey can i do a day coaching can i do this um because you will find a benefit and it will fast track that that like to get you where you want to be um so i think yeah just just definitely patience though is the main thing don't don't try to rush it it'll come yeah Oh, I, I reckon that's great advice as well. Like I sort of apply that to my sponsors. Um, yeah. I sort of go in there with my proposal and I, I got it. You got it. And that can be a bit scary, but you really got to, yeah. you know, pull yourself together, go talk to them, be the best yeah. you can. Yeah. You that's know, right. Hopefully, hope for the best and, yeah. you know, bring so new I, partners I did, on board. That's right. Yeah. So I did a public speaking course when I was, was I 13 or 14? Um for that, for that reason, just to learn how to talk and be confident in front of a camera, be confident in front of sponsors. Because when you're 14, you're talking to a 35 year old or 40 year old who owns this business. Uh, yeah. It's very easily, you, you can be very easily daunted by that. Um, it is, it is scary. Um, but yeah, I think definitely just confidence in yourself and it's, it's hard. Some people like telling everyone how good they are. Some people don't. And it's, I, I found it hard to go in and tell people how good I am. Um, mm. So I had to really learn how to sort of tell people in a respectful way, um, which was, I think that was the biggest challenge. I agree 100%. Like it's a, it's a very hard thing to do, but obviously, you know, you learn and you obviously can improve how you're saying what you're saying and you know, hopefully pick up those partners that you can continue a good relationship with and help keep you racing and hopefully bring yeah. customers in their door. Yeah, for sure. This year you're in the battery <laughs> world Aussie racing cars championship. Yeah. You yep. know, Camaro. Seriously, yep. these cars are really cool. <laughs> and the category's been around for a while now and it's yep. always been a really it's always been really popular. Why yeah. do you think it's so popular for competitors and spectators? Ooh. So I think definitely like the, the racing we put on is honestly it's, be- it's probably the best at any supercar event we go to, we are the best support category, and I'd argue we are better than supercars mm-hmm. to watch. Just because we're the one, we're small, so we can go four wide where they can only go two wide, say. But the way like we can just throw it under brakes and things like that, um, it's just just the best racing ever. Yeah. Um, also, the kids, the kids love the little cars. You know, they think it's their size, so they always. I have a lot of people every round. They always want to come over, have a sit in the cars. You know, I just ch- chat to the parents about the cars, and it's really cool. 
Uh, but yeah, I think definitely just the racing we put on is just a, a level above the rest. Yeah, I love watching Aussie racing cars. <laughs> um, I've always wanted to get into it, but yeah. I've got to see how I go um, in Formula V first before I can start making yeah. moves. Um, but yeah, I really enjoy watching it as a support category. And let's be honest, you know, it can be better than supercars. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, for sure. But, but do you believe there's still a car or category out there that you'd still like to drive in one day? Oh, for sure, of course. Uh, like definitely, I'd I want to go to Super Three and Super Two and make that progression, of course. Um, but you do have to be realistic about things yeah. like this. You know, it is a lot of money, um, and I, I I've got like the rest of my life to to you know get a job. Like go to I'm at uni at the moment, so I got finished uni. Um, and then look for a job in that field or if I choose or if I go somewhere else, you know, it's not um, not the be all and end all, but definitely like I've always, I want to do Porsches. Porsches I think would be awesome. Um, supercars for sure. Definitely go to supercars. And I, I want to do like an F3 race or something like that just to experience high, high yeah. downforce. Um, Cause I think that's probably the most high downforce in, in Australia, mm. uh, maybe radicals as well. Uh, oh, yeah. Because everything I've sort of done so far isn't super high downforce, and supercars aren't really high downforce either. So yeah, definitely would like to do something high downforce. Do you have any sponsors or people you'd like to thank for helping you out getting getting to this point of your racing journey? Oh yeah, for sure. Like Productivity Bootcamp, they've been there since day one. Um, they're my major sponsor, and I seriously can't thank them enough. Uh, Munro Ball again, have been there since day one. And same as 1-800 for promo. So 1-800 for promo, do all my shirts. So all my merch shirts, all my team shirts, all my stickers on my cars. Um, I got like Morgan Motorsport. He's my mechanic. He's helped me a lot recently. Um, Tavardi, uh, Total Surveying Solutions, uh, Trend Tire Power, Bold Trailers. Um, I, got a, I got a few guys that have definitely helped me a lot. Like I got a couple of local guys like GTS Earthworks. GTS Earthworks, sorry. He's helped me a fair bit too. Yeah, so that's really cool um, that you've got all these sponsors and partners who, you know, help you out and hopefully, yeah. you know, you can try and return the favour for them and get customers yeah. in their door. Um, yeah, that's right. But where can people follow your progress on social media yeah. or even hit you up for some driver coaching? Yeah, so my Instagram, Lachlan Ward Racing, um, or my Facebook, Lachlan Ward. Um, definitely those are probably two easiest ways. I do have a website, lachlanward.com.au, uh, so you can go there and, put in a form for driver coaching or ask a question. Um, and i got YouTube. So I do a lot of YouTube videos and do a lot of uh, videos just for to people to watch and enjoy, I hope. Um, so you go Loch Lomod Racing on YouTube as well. So there's uh, every part, basically, every every social media outlet I've got, which is you can contact me through, me through any of them. Yeah, well, thanks so much for speaking to me tonight, uh, Lachlan, and, you know, catching up, having a chat. You certainly have achieved a lot in a short amount of time and I'm sure there's a lot more to come. Best of luck for the rest of this year, uh, this year's championships in the legend cars and Aussie racing cars. And I can't wait to see you back on track as a support category for V8 supercars. And for anyone else racing this weekend, remember to drive fast and take chances safely, of course. All right. Thanks, Lachlan. Cheers, man.